Hello everyone. In this video, I will show you how to create this gradient effect using shader nodes and the compositor. To demonstrate this shader, I will use these headphones I created a while back, but you can use anything you like. Let's head over to the shading tab. Make sure that all objects have the same material. Mine is called gradient. The material has no shader at the moment, so let's change that. First, I will add an emission shader. For the next step, make sure that you have the Note Rambler add-on enabled. So now I can press Ctrl T and delete the image texture node. In between, I will place a color ramp node instead. Currently, the texture coordinates are set to UV. But I want to change that because I want to control the color ramp with the MT. So let's do that. And I will choose a sphere as a shape. This will help me visualize the gradient afterwards. First, to make sure that my notes stay in place, even if I click on the side, I will select this little pin icon here. So now I can click anywhere else and my shader nodes stay in place. So the next step is to make sure that the MT is our object to control the gradient. So I have to make sure that the UV coordinates are set to object. Now we can pick our MT from the viewport. So for the next step, I'll need to add the gradient texture into my shader notes. I'll plug that in between the mapping and the color ramp. From the drop-down menu you can select spherical or quadratic sphere in my case, I chose Quadratic Sphere. Now, since the mapping is controlled by the empty, I can go into the viewport and resize the empty to my likings. Since we are in the center of the empty, everything is white at the current state. But as soon as I start scaling it down in the y-axis, you will start to see the gradient appear. Now, since my empty is a sphere and my gradient type is set to quadratic sphere, I get a visual representation of what's going on. That means that the center of the sphere will be white and the further out it goes, the darker it gets until it reaches the surface and then becomes black. And now, as soon as I start moving the empty, I already get the basic effect of the gradient. Now to spice up things a little bit more, I would like to add additional details. As you can see right now, everything is relatively smooth and the details are barely visible. To change that, I would like to add some darker edges and I will do that with the ambient occlusion node. I will mix that node with the color ramp. Let's search for the Mix RGB node. And now let's plug in the ambient occlusion into the second socket. And instead of Mix, I will choose Multiply as the blending mode. I raised the samples to 32 because it gave me a smoother gradient in the final image. And now, as soon as I change the factor, you will see how it's with that and with the ambient occlusion added. So when I raise the factor to 1, our details are very visible. We can also control the size of the ambient occlusion by changing the distance, but I will leave the distance as it is.
since I only want to have a soft contrast for this effect, I will reduce the factor to 0 0.2. When I mute and unmute the node, you can see the difference of with and without the engine gradient added. Now this is the whole setup for the gradient. You can pause the video here if you want to rebuild it step by step. For the next step, we will head over to the Compositing tab so that we can create some color adjustments. We could also change the color ramp in the shader nodes, but I would like to show you some additional tips. I already rendered the headphones and to see it in the backdrop, I will need to add a VR node. So let's add that first. Now let's connect everything together so we have it as a backdrop. Additionally, I would like to add the file output. Now let's connect these two. The file output allows me to save multiple images at the same time in the folder I choose to save them in. Now to finally change the color, let's add the color ramp. When I hover over this color area, I can press E on the keyboard to get the color picker. I already opened an image file with my colors and now I'm going to select the dark blue. Now I select the white end from the color ramp, hover over the color field and press E again to get the color picker. To spice things up, I want to have an additional color in between, so I'll select plus to add a new color slot. Now same as before, pressing E over the color field and selecting our final color. Now that I have all colors selected, I will choose Ease from the drop-down menu, so I can get a smoother transition between the colors. Now I can go in and make my final adjustments for the gradient. Yeah, I think this looks nice. Now I would like to render out some additional color variations, and that's why the file output comes in handy. With the file output node selected, you can go over to the properties. You will find those by pressing N on the keyboard. Under the properties tab, you can just select add inputs and you will get a new slot. Now I'll connect these two nodes together, but right now at the moment I will just get two times the same image. To make some additional color adjustments, I will just add a hue and saturation node and just plug it in between. To see what's going on, I will just connect it to the viewer node. And now I can go in and change the hue to add some additional variations. So now I have two color variations, one directly from the color ramp and one from the hue and saturation node. Now if I wish, I can just add another slot. Now I can just go in and duplicate the hue and saturation node. Now again, to see what happens, I just plug it into the viewer node and adjust the hue value. When I'm happy with my color variations, I can render it out and I will get three different images. Now what's left is to select the path and click render. I hope you learned something and see you next time. Thanks for watching.